lesson 4.1, page 176, writing equations in slope intercept form. In this lesson, you will learn how to write equations in slope intercept form and how to use linear equations to solve real life problems. Let's talk about writing an equation in slope intercept form. And remember, that's y equals mx plus b. You should be able to use your slope and y-intercept given to write an equation. Actually, that's pretty easy to do. For example, write an equation of each line with the given slope and y-intercept. In question A, they tell you the slope is negative 3 and the y-intercept's a half. Well, that should be easy. If the y-intercept's a half, write that in for B, and since the slope's negative 3, write that in for M, and you'd have y equals negative 3x plus a half. That's your equation. In question B, the slope is 0 and the y-intercept negative 2. Okay, well there's slope-intercept form, so this should be pretty easy also. Take negative 2 and substitute that in for B, and take 0 and substitute that in for M, and you would get that statement. Now let's simplify it. 0x is nothing, so y would equal negative 2. That would be your equation. You should be able to use a graph also to write an equation in slope-intercept form just as easily. Okay? Remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So we need two things. You need the slope and you need the y-intercept. Okay, well, let's look at these graphs and get those. Actually, the y-intercept super easy. Look here. On graph A, the y-intercept is negative 3. So I'm going to plug that in for B in a minute. Let's get the slope. I can count squares. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over 1, 2, 3, 4. Up 6 over 4. 6 over 4 is 3 halves. So M would equal 3 halves. B is negative 3. And all I got to do is take 3 halves and plug it in for M and negative 3 and plug that in for B, and there's my equation. The equation is y equals 3 halves x minus 3. Let's do this problem. Okay? My y-intercept, it's right there. B equals 2. Let's get the slope. Down 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. I went down 3, over 4. So my slope is negative 3 quarter. I just got to plug negative 3 quarter in for M and 2 in for B, and you can see they did that here. Y equals negative 3 quarter X plus 2. So it should be very easy for you to look at a graph and quickly write an equation in slope-intercept form for that graph. Now, if we are given just two points, we're going to have to use the slope formula to figure this out. Remember, the slope formula is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So there's two things we've got to figure out. We've got to get the slope, and we have to get the y-intercept. Now there's no picture in this problem. So let's get the slope. You can see the book does it in the following way. They're doing the slope right here. So here are the x value, y value, x value, y value. So they're taking negative 1 minus 5 on top, and they're doing 0 minus negative 3 on the bottom. Negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6, and 0 minus negative 3. Remember, add the opposite. That's positive 3. Negative 6 over 3 is negative 2. Well, there's my slope. M equals negative 2. Now, think about it. Look at these two points. Think about the point 0, negative 1. Wouldn't that be right here? There's your y-intercept. The y-intercept is negative 1. So B would be negative 1. So here's my equation. Plug negative 2 in for M. Plug negative 1 in for B. And y equals negative 2x minus 1 is my equation. On question B, they're doing the same work. Um, here's x, y, x, y. We have two points. So here's my point 2, here's my point 1. So negative 5 for y minus negative 5 on top. That's 0 on top. 
and 8 minus 0 on the bottom is 8, and 0 over 8 gives you 0. So m equals 0. And then think about that point. Isn't 0 negative 5 down like here somewhere on the y-axis? That means b is negative 5. So y would equal 0x minus 5, and 0x just cancels out y equals negative 5, and that's what you see here, okay? Now remember, when you write equations, you might be given the information in function notation. So if I want to write an equation in slope-intercept form and they give me this information, I need to know how to read that properly. So remember, f of 0 equals 10 means we plug 0 in for x and y worked out to 10 like you see here. And f of 6 equals 34 means you plugged in 6 for x and you got 34 for y, which you see here. Okay, so I got to find the slope and then I got to find my y-intercept and then I can write my equation in slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b. Okay, let's get the slope. So it looks like they, you know, x, y, x, y. It looks like they called this point 2 and this point 1. So they did 34 for y minus 10 for y on top, that's 24. And then they did 6 minus 0 on the bottom for x, that's 6. 24 divided by 6 is 4. So your slope is 4. So let's plug in 4 for m. And then do you notice 0, 10 would be up here somewhere, 0, 10. That means my y-intercept, b equals 10. So plug in 10 for b. There's your equation y equals 4x plus 10. Why don't you try on these six questions? I want you to write each of these problems in slope-intercept form. Pause the video and do that. Okay, and I'm back, and I wrote the answers up here in blue. So for question one, the slope is 7. Plug that in for m, and the y-intercept is 2. Plug that in for b. y equals 7x plus 2 for number 1. Number 2, plug in 1 third for m and negative 1 for b. y equals 1 third x minus 1 would be the answer there. For 3, we have a picture. There's your y-intercept. It's 1. And can you see how we're going up 2 over 4 for the slope? That's a half. So y equals 1 half x plus 1 would be the equation. Number four, my y-intercept is negative one. That's why I put a negative one in for b. And on this problem, it looks like we're going down two and over five. Two down, five right. There's your slope, and there's the equation. y equals negative two fifths x minus one. In question five, we had to use the slope formula. So if I call this x and y and x and y, we had to do 10 minus negative two on top and we had to do 4 minus 0 on the bottom, and that's 12 over 4, which equals 3. So the slope is 3, and there's my y-intercept. It's two units down. There's my slope-intercept form equation. And for 6, this is function notation. G of 0 equals 9. There's one point. G of 8 equals 7. There's the second. So 8, 7. And you can see I calculated the slope, 9 minus 7 for the y, 0 minus 8 for the x's, and I got negative quarter. There's my slope, and my y-intercept's a 9. There's my slope-intercept form equation. To wrap up the video, solving real-life problems. A linear model is a linear function that models a real-life situation. In other words, you're writing slope-intercept form. Maybe I should write that on here we are using slope-intercept form for a real-life problem is uh, what linear model is, okay? When a quantity y changes at a constant rate with respect to quantity x, so again, if you look at the table, what this means, if you look at the table, if there's a constant rate of change for y and x, you can use slope-intercept form to model that relationship. The value of m is a constant rate of change. Now remember, m is slope. So when you hear rate of change, maybe I should write that in here. Whenever you read a problem and you read rate of change, 
that is telling you that slope. I would definitely get that in your notes. Rate of change is slope. And the value B is the initial or starting value of Y. This is telling you that at start time of the problem, the start time is zero, that means X would be zero, that Y is the amount which makes the Y intercept. So if you know the problem starts at a certain time, whatever number Y is, put a question mark, so we would, it depends on the problem, that would be your Y intercept. Might be easier to show you in this example. Excluding hydropower, U.S. power plants use renewable energy sources to generate 105 million megawatt hours of electricity in 2007. By 2012, the amount of electricity generated had increased to 219 megawatt hours. Write a linear model that represents the number of megawatt hours generated by non-hydropower renewable energy sources as a function of the number of years since 2007. That's super important. Use this model to predict the number of megawatt hours that will be generated in 2017. So 2007 is the start time. So that's time zero. So 2007 is year zero, and they generated 105 million pop, uh, megawatt hours of electricity. Now 2012 is five years later. So that would mean Five years later for X, in 2012, they generated 219 million. They want me to write an equation. Well, if you know the two points, writing the equation should be easy now, okay? First of all, do you notice there's the y-intercept, 0, 105. That's the start time. So B is 105. Now let's get the slope. I got to take my y values, which are 219 minus 105 and put that over my x values, which is 5 minus 0. And 219 over 105 is 114. Divide that by 5. If you use your calculator real quick, that'd be 22.8. So there's my slope. So my equation would be y equals mx plus b. m is 22.8, and b is 105, and there's my equation y equals 22.8x plus 105. Now they wrote it in reverse, no big, it's no big deal. You could write it that way or we can write it, I'll just write it in normal form, 22.8x plus 105. So there's my equation. Now here's the next thing. Use this model to predict the number of megawatt hours that would be generated in 2017. Now, 2007 is when the process started. That was year zero. 2017 is 10 years later. Okay, I'll write that in here. So what I need to do is take 10 and plug it in for X, and I can use that then to calculate the approximate number of megawatt um, hours of electricity in 2017. So you can see they do that here. I'll highlight it. They are taking 105 plus 22.8 times 10, and they're getting 333. So that means there must have been 333 million megawatt hours of electricity in 2017. I'm going to pause the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.